welcome to Berkshire Guitar and Afar Repairs. Stuart Smith with you as always. And today I'm going to make a video uh, just because I've never seen this amp before. It's a Marshall Lead 30 Watt. It's uh, quite a tall thing as you can see. Transistor, no valves in this. And I've certainly never seen one So um, in all the thousands of amps I've done. So I suspect you might not have seen one either. So I thought it might be interesting to have a look inside. Not sure I can fix it. The guy says that um, it's not, not working, there's no sound at all. The indicator light isn't working, but he thinks that's just an indicator light problem. It hasn't been working for some time, apparently. And uh, he said, something melted. Uh, okay, what? Anyway, um, reminds me of that uh, aircraft story where you write in your fault report after you bring an aircraft back, any faults you find, and uh, some pilot had written something rattling in cockpit and the, the wag of an engineer had uh, returned the fault card with the words something tightened exclamation mark <laughs> which always amused me so god knows what we'll find when we open up this but anyway let's have a little look inside because I'm going to be interested to see what's under the hood here most of this is loudspeaker of course so there'll just be a fairly cheap and cheerful transistor amp up in here, my guess is with a couple of power transistors. Anyway, let's, um, I think we'll turn it on first of all to prove there's nothing whatsoever, not, not a peep coming out of the speaker, haven't turned it on yet, and then um, we'll take the chassis out and have a look inside. Right, I'm about to plug it in, I don't know whether I said, but he, he mentioned to me it was last used two years ago, or last worked two years ago, so let's just plug it in and see if we get anything at all. Right, plugged in. We didn't expect that light to work and indeed it isn't. And there's absolutely nothing at all coming out of the speaker. Not the tiniest hum or hiss which is kind of uh, significant. I'm going to put my ear to the cabinet to see if I can hear any actual There's a very low level transformer hum there, which tells me that the fuse is probably working in the plug, and uh, maybe the mains fuse is working too. So if I'd heard nothing there at all, I would suspect the, the plug fuses. Anyway, let's check the plug fuses since we're here. No, I don't, I don't actually need to. I just put my ear to the back of the cabinet and I can hear, I can hear a definite mains hum there. Uh, we will check the plug at some point to make sure the fuse rating is all okay, but we know the main fuse is working. So I think what we'll do is just take the chassis out and have a look inside. Chassis seems to be secured by four screws in the top, so I'm hoping that, that if I remove those four screws I will just be able to slide the chassis out either forwards or well, not backwards, that's a completely sealed cabinet there. No screws at all, so we'll be sliding that chassis forward hopefully. I wonder if it will come out. Nope, no chance of getting it out further than this. It's just completely stuck. It won't come any further. So my only opportunity that I can do now is to take this uh, front grille panel off and see what lies beneath there. So let's do that. Just a quickie, as I'm removing these screws from this grille panel, you can see how rusted they are. Now that always worries me when I remove a screw from an amp and it's rusty. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever for a screw like this to be rusty. And what that tells me is at some point this amp has been stored, I don't know, a damp cellar, a garage or something like that. And uh, that's why this is, these screws have gone rusty. Doesn't bode well really. Um, there's an ad age which says don't store an amplifier anywhere that you wouldn't sleep yourself. And that's very good advice. So if, you don't, if you're not sleeping in a damp basement and if you're not sleeping in a garage, don't store your amp there. Anyway, let's proceed with removing the uh, grill cloth baffle plate. Okay, so the plate has the speakers attached to it and it swings forward like this or comes out altogether. So I'm going to try and uh, just swing that forward a bit and support it and see if I can get the chassis out. Of course, the chassis will, will be attached to these speakers somehow, so we're going to have to uh, disconnect that first. But making some progress here. Right, interesting. I just went to reach down to disconnect the wires that go up the chassis and um, look what I found. You can see that this wire here is completely broken, just hanging off there. 
So that might be our problem. Might not be anything more wrong with this amp than the fact this wire has become disconnected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to reconnect that and then uh, turn the amp on see if we get any noise out of it. I'll still take the chassis out anyway, but let's just see if that was our, our main problem. Right, you're seeing this as I'm seeing it. I've just put a little crock to crock uh, lead in there to hook up that speaker. So let's turn it on. Ooh. Okay, that was a horrible noise to start with, wasn't it? Working though. Hummy. Treble's working. Let's see if. Uh, Oh, we've got, we got a signal there. The volume control's very dirty. That hum is quite likely to be smoothing capacitors. So, uh, that's good news that it seems to be working. Loud hum. That's interesting. So uh, when I strum the guitar it uh, put it into oscillation basically. Um, I'm wondering if that might actually be smoothing capacitors and that as we put a big signal in it demands a lot from the from the power supply. It can't cope so the power supply collapses you know, from 24 volts to 15 or something and then then uh, comes back up again and goes back down again and then goes back up again and that's what you're hearing that <coughs> sound is the power supply um, oscillating effectively. So we're going to take the chassis out and my first port of call is going to be the large electrolytic smoothing caps. Well here we are top side, inside I should say, and uh, very old school design this 1970s. This is the sort of amplifier I was designing back in the 70s with a couple of 2 in 3055s or whatever. They aren't 3055s but very similar. A couple of power transistors, some sort of phase inverter and a bit of preamplification using BC184Ls or some sort of transistor. So very old school and we're going to need a little bit of um, power supply smoothing so let's just have a little look at the smoothing capacitors. Well, well, well. As if by prescience I think we have a little problem with those. So that's our issue. Both of the smoothing caps are completely and utterly dead, shall we say. Um, so that's that. Now whilst we're here, what's going on with this indicator light? Normally cause a problem, an indicator light. Oh, that's interesting. It's, uh, okay, it's, um, yes, it must be a neon, I think. This is the AC input. I don't know, it must be a low voltage. Probably a... Hmm, not sure what that is. It looks like a standard neon, but it's not on the main side of things. So we'll have to have a look what that, uh, what that is. And it's fed through this um, 330 ohm resistor from the AC side. So it's a filament bulb. And uh, my guess is they're pulling off the... Um, I don't know what... 50 volts or 45 volts AC, dropping it down to make it 24 volts AC or something for that filament. Anyway, doubtless we can sort out something to go in there at some point. We've got various DC voltages around so we can just tap off something and put something in there. Right, so let's see what these capacitors are. Um, they're going to be a thousand microfarads at 50 volts or something. 2200 microfarads at can't read the volts there. Probably it's 50 volts. I think I'll just undo undo this and pull out one of these to make sure we know what these are and then see if I've got any. Might have to order them up. Okay, here we are. 2200 microfarads, 40 volts DC. I'm going to see if I can get uh, like a 4700 microfarads at 50 volts or even 63 volts DC uh, to, to exchange this for. We've got plenty of room, so let me see what I've got in stock. I don't think I've got anything like this. Um, and then I'll uh, maybe have to order up a couple. Mm, no, I've got a couple of 4,700 at 100 volts, but they are 
too wide a diameter to go in there. I want to try and get something a bit tight in here. I mean, I could I could stick them in here somewhere, but that's a lot of work. I may as well go online and uh, get a couple of um, 4,700. I'll measure the diameter of these. We want to ideally get the right diameter. Let me go and do that, and I'll just report back to you that I have successfully identified some and have them on order. Right, the good news was I was easily able to get some uh, 2200 microfarad 63 volt caps of exactly this diameter. So I'm just going to wait a couple of days for those to come in. We'll pop those in. Meanwhile, let's have a little explore of this neon uh, neon indicator lamp here. I've managed to um, see what the voltage is by using my little dental mirror. Quite a useful little tool that you can just get under and have a look at things. And of course the voltage is right underneath there. It's 9 volts anyway. So uh, that's something. Now what I want to just check is has it got 9 volts going to it because if it hasn't then that's um, one issue and if it has then obviously it's the actual bulb that's gone. So let me plug this in again if I can find the lead. So I'm going to go you won't, you won't be able to see this on my meter, but take my word for it. I'm just going to go to volts AC, and um, they seem to have taken one side of the lamp to chassis, and the other to this resistor here. So let's see what we've got. Should have nine volts there. Okay, guys and girls, what am I doing wrong here? Just shows you that no matter how experienced you are, you can get yourself in a right flipping mess. So I've got bridge rectifier here. And uh, you might not be able to see, but the middle two pins are clearly labelled AC with a wavy line. And that's la labelled negative and that's la labelled positive. And I've looked at the bridge rectifier and that is actually correct. So if I go on the DC side of this, DC, look. And I go negative on there and positive on there. We've got a nice 45 volts DC, which is exact exactly what I'd expect. And by the way, the amp works and is producing a nice clean sound and a reasonable power. So we know that's okay. However, if I go onto the AC side, so I change to AC, and I'll make a smaller range on here, 20 volts AC. Now I'm going to go directly onto the pins of the bridge rectifier. One, two, 2.85 volts AC. Duh! Now, this is a complete mystery to me. I've tried three meters and all with the same result. If I measure negative to positive DC, the outer terminals of this bridge rectifier, I get 45 volts DC. And indeed, the amp is humming and, you know, kind of working. That will make sense, but if I put the meter on the AC terminals here, directly onto the pins of that bridge rectifier, I'm getting one and a half, two volts on every meter that I put on there. I'm absolutely at a loss as to why that is. I don't know if you're screaming at the screen right now, but um, you're a better person than I if you can tell me what's going on there might have to just lift the board and um, just have a little look underneath there and see what's happening. I mean, if I was getting nothing on the DC side, of course, we'd be, we'd be highly suspicious. But we are getting D the DC, but nothing on the AC side. Well, look what I found when I turned the board over. The secondary, that's one side of the secondary, the other black's the other side of the secondary from the transformer just disconnected from there. It was just hanging out down here. So that's why we weren't measuring any AC there. I thought it was going mad. Now why the amp's working, I don't really know. It's got sort of half of the AC signal, but this is this is disconnected and it goes straight back to the to the secondary. So quite how that's how that was getting that um 45 volts, I'm not really sure. But anyway, I'm going to solder that back on there. And you never know, this, um, this lamp might spring to light and, uh, and then we'll be good to go apart from the smoothing cap. So let's have a go at that see if we get lucky. By the way, whilst I'm here, um, 
you know, we, we should probably consider... Well, let me say something else. I quite like amplifiers like this. This is the sort of amp I designed back in the day. It's actually at the limit of my design abilities, so don't be too impressed. And it's just very simple. It's a couple of power transistors in push-pull, a couple of uh, driver transistors for these two, and then a little bit of preamplification. It's very simple, it sounds nice and clean, but these days, if you get a 30 watt transistor amplifier, there are, you know, six chips on here and 17 transistors. And if you look at the schematic, you think, ugh, you know, I've got 50 years experience, I don't really know how what's happening with that amplifier. It's hugely complicated. So, um, anyway, I quite like a, a simple, clean design like this. Now, what I was going to say is we should probably consider changing out these as well whilst we're here. I think I really ought to. No, that's probably okay. But I think I should change out that 25 at uh, 25 volts, 100 microfarad. Maybe that one. What else have we got? I've got a few here too. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to check with the customer first whether he wants me to uh, get this going for a certain price. Um, and that'll be one price. And does he want me to bring it up to scratch with all the new capacitors for another price? And that will depend on yeah, what his plans are for the amp. Anyway, let's get that soldered on and see what happens. Well, just put it all back together and um, no change. We've still got a volt across here on the AC side. So uh, maybe that connection came off as I turned the board upside down and it was there all along. So um, what I'm going to do now is take the board out again and uh, measure directly onto the secondary of the mains transformer. I have no idea what's going on here. Okay, I'm not quite sure what I did earlier. Maybe I mismeasured or something, I don't know. But anyway, it was okay on the underside of the board. And now I've put the board back. We do now have on the AC side, look, 34, 5 volts AC. Now it's centre tapped this secondary, centre tap goes to ground. So that'll be probably plus and minus 35 there. And um, from ground to here, we've also got 22 volts AC, look. And when I go to the other side of this resistor, we've still got 22 volts AC, which means that this lamp here is open circuit. So we need to replace that lamp with something. I'm going to have a rootle around now to see what I've got. Right, I've removed the lamp and it's a 6 volt lamp. A filament lamp of some sort and um, what is it uh, it's exactly one centimeter square really with a diameter of um, 0.7 or something so once again I shall go on to trusty old eBay and see if I can find anything remotely like that um, I did have some neons, but they were not square, and they were about the size of the little circle inside there, so it wouldn't have looked very good on the panel. Let's see if we can get a square one, something like this. Well, um, unfortunately, no luck. Now, I'm not saying you can't get a indicator lamp like this. I'm sure you can, but I've just had a half-hour hunt around and nothing. Like 99% of them are round circular, you know, obviously with a threaded part here you just push through and screw screw up. So um, we might have to live with a circular one. What I think I'm going to do, since this is scrap anyway, I'm just going to run a hacksaw through here and see if we get lucky and uh, and the bulb just kind of pulls out. There's only a little bulb in there. So if we could get that bulb out we could easily put another little 6 volt bulb in there and uh, keep the original light. But I'm not going to spend hours on it, so let me just uh, see what happens when I run a hacksaw through here. It's um, dead anyway, this, so we're not losing anything. Right, got fairly lucky there. Just drilled that straight out and the bulb came out, so we've got a nice holder there with nothing in it. And I thought I would, rather than tart around trying to get a 6 volt filament bulb, which is only going to blow at some point, we'll uh, pop an LED in there somehow. And... Um, yeah, I think that should do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, the diameter of this isn't quite right, I'm going to increase the diameter of this uh, maybe with a bit of heat shrink tubing or something so it fits in there. 
then we'll get some DC on here and see if the thing looks bright enough for the front panel indicator. Let's have a go at that. Right, that's one piece of heat shrink sleeving on there. Not sure if that's going to be wide enough diameter, probably not. Let's have a go. No, it's still quite loose in there. Um, I'll put another couple of bits on, see if we can get that to, uh, to jam in there. Once it's working, we'll pop a little bit of glue in there anyway, just to hold it all stable. But it's a bit flopping around in there at the moment. I've tried the, ne the next size up LED and it's too big, so uh, we need to go to the smaller size. OK, the LED fits snugly in there now. doesn't wobble about, and then with a little drop of glue on the end when we're done, that'll be fine. So let's get some DC on here on the power supply and see if we think this is bright enough to work. I'm sure it will be, um, but let's have a look anyway. Nah, I wasn't very happy with that. Uh, I should have checked it before I went to all the trouble of uh, packing it out, of course, but it only took me five minutes to do that. Um, it's a bit sort of feeble, really, and I think it's because these LEDs I've got in my stash box are pretty old. By that I mean they're not modern specifications, and they're, they're OK, but they're not very bright. So anyway, I've sent off for some ultra-bright red LEDs, so uh, we've got to wait for the other bits anyway. So when they come in, we'll have another go at this, but it'll, it'll work quite nicely, I think. That'll be... It'll be good that we'll be able to use the original um, light. Uh, one thing I meant to say to you, I might have uh, not said, I've ordered these capacitors, as you know. Most of the people watching this channel will know, but I always like to uh, talk to people who are just starting out on the road as well. And uh, these capacitors are called radial, because the terminals are on the radius of the, uh, of the circle. The ones with the leads coming out the end are called axial because they're on the axis of the of the cylinder. So radial, uh, the terminals are on one side of the cap. Axial, you've got a wire coming out of each of them. And these, I would call these radial can capacitors, just because they're, I don't know, maybe maybe not. But anyway, they come in all sorts of sizes, of course, from little little tiny ones to to big ones. These are axial look with a lead coming out either end, and a radial one will be sticking up from the board with the leads going into the board. There are no radial caps on this amp. I suspect they might not have existed when this amp was built. Uh, who knows? Anyway, there you go. I've emailed the customer and asked him if he wants me to do the whole lot or just to get the amp working. So that's it from me until I get some bits and then I'll report back to you. So I got a new high brightness LED in the post. In fact, I got a mixed bag of 50 bright LEDs for two quid or something ridiculous. And I've, um, I've put the LED in here, glued it in with a bit of uh, heat shrink, and it look, works quite well. Look, so that's nice. That's worked really well. So we can pop that back in now, and we've, we've retained the original looking lamp there, bit of authenticity. And there's the new indicator lamp installed and I've put a 1K8 resistor in this lead here and when I get my new caps I'm just going to connect these two wires across there, it's about 25 volts there and uh, that powers the indicator quite nicely. I've tested it. So now I'm just going to wait for these caps to turn up. They've taken quite a while so far. I'm hoping they'll come in the next couple of days and I can get this one fixed and off my bench. I'm not sure what this is. I found this lying around inside here. I don't know whether I dropped it in there or whether it was in there when I opened it up. I've got no idea what that is. Here we are a few days later. There are the original capacitors, and I have now received in the post half a dozen of these, 2,200 microfarads at uh, 63 volts. They're more highly rated than the existing ones. They are the same diameter, but they are shorter, just because modern capacitors are better 
and all capacitors so they'll, they'll come up to about there. Now I've made a chart or diagram of the connections here. It's a, I'm slightly confusing the way they've done this but basically this ground here that's connected to there and that is connected down to ground and that's also the center tap of the secondary of the transformer uh, and then um, we have purple here which is negative not a color I would have chosen for negative and a white here for positive again not a color I would have particularly chosen for white for a positive and I've, so I've made this little diagram here so that we get it right when we put the new capacitors in so I'm going to go ahead now and uh, put the new capacitors in and hopefully this will be sorted
right there we go um, the new capacitors are in I've wired the light in as you saw me do I've still got these old secondaries here which was the uh, the lamp I'm going to remove those at the last moment um, I might put a bit of cable tie around here or something but let's make sure it works first of all so we're plugged in turn on great no hum that's perfect. It's actually working now. Oh, yep, working. I'm not fond of the expression, it is what it is, but it does apply very well to this. It's a uh, honest to goodness 20, 30 watt transistor amp, and it sounds like it. It's very clean, and uh, it's, it's fine for what it is. So that all works. Now that's good news. Uh, I think what I'm going to do now is to just tidy up this secondary. I don't like that floating around there. Uh, I probably will just put a couple of pieces of heat shrink sleeving over there just to uh, stop them touching each other and, and just leave the original wiring there. Uh, the You can't see it but the lamp is on and looks very nice. I might show you that in the end. Now I've had a uh, call from a customer and what they want to do, or he, what he wants to do I should say, is he now has agreed to changing all of these electrolytic capacitors here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine electrolytics in there. Uh, I think that's a good idea. I mean, this is a 50 years old this amp. And so they're working, we can tell they're working, but they are quite old. And uh, whilst we're in here for the sake of uh, not very much money, we may as well swap them all out. So I'm going to do that. I won't bore you with another long section video on me doing that. Uh, it's just a question of taking the nuts off the front here. This board will come out and I can easily swap those out. And then this board here has been out already. I've taken the, the uh, nuts off here. I'll just flip that upside down and change these out. Probably take me half an hour, 45 minutes. So I'll rejoin you when I've done that and we'll make sure the amp's still working. Well, there you go, the Marshall 30 watt lead. Never had one in the uh, workshop before, and I think I quite like the little lamp actually. I don't know why, I took to it. And uh, as I said, it's an almost to goodness uh, transistor power amp. So I think I was quite pleased with what we did there. We managed to get the uh, original light working so that it looks authentic, even though it's got an LED in there. And we managed to diagnose that hum which as often with a transistor amp is the smoothing caps. And for good measure, we replaced all the other electrolytics whilst we were in there. So a nice fix, happy with that one. I'm sure the client will be delighted and I will see you on the next one.